What's good, YouTube? Quinn Way coming to y'all with another playoff prediction. Today, we're going to talk about the Golden State Warriors and the San Antonio Spurs, a series that I told you guys last year. Whoever wins this series will win the NBA championship. The Spurs had a huge chance going in game one, and they showed out. Kawhi Leonard, their best player, goes down, and the series was basically over. And honestly and truthfully, this year, they have no Kawhi Leonard. Greg Popovich said he don't want to see him come back in. And if he is available to play, I, I will play him, even if it hurts our consistency because you got to guard and respect Kawhi Leonard, even on the defensive end. But we're going to judge this playoff series as if Kawhi Leonard would never come back. And if that's the case, they have a better shot because um, KD Warriors are slower, they less aggressive. Um, they don't pass the ball, which creates mismatches and gives easier opportunities. And they don't push the pace, which also gives them easy buckets and opportunities. But honestly, Greg Popovich can coach his ass off. He's going to find holes. He's going to find mismatches. He's going to find ways to take advantage of his players and put them in positions to where they're going to succeed. If you ever watch a Spurs game, they always get layups, dunks, and mid-range jumpers, and they usually always be open. They just don't have enough talent to where they take advantage of that. But they still are a respectable team. This is not going to be a walk-in-the-park easy W. Even last year, it wasn't really a walk-in-the-park. They had out-star powered them. But the Spurs continue to come to play. The games got away from them later in those series because they couldn't hang with the Warriors because they didn't have enough after Kawhi Leonard went out. But this Golden State team was explosive last year, and it was explosive for the last three years. One minute you can be in the game, they spin you down by 12 to 15 points. And at the end of the day, that's why this Spurs team is going to struggle because every time I watch the Spurs this year, they just can't make enough shots. They're going to need a hell of a performance from LaMarcus Aldridge consistently in this series. Rudy Gay, to me, is the X factor. Can he come off that bench or start and give him some size and give him some length and some shot making? Patty Mills has always been one of my more favorite players on the Spurs because he's aggressive. He comes out looking to attack. He comes out looking to make shots. And they need something like that. DeJounte Murray is kind of the opposite. He's a better defender. He got better size. And he's more smarter of a player and takes more smarter shots. But he's less aggressive. He looks more to run the offense. He looks more to um, pick his spots, which ain't bad. But that, they just have two different play styles if you if you start Patty Mills or if you start DeJounte. But DeJounte is a better all-around player. He's a better defender. He's a better rebounder. And... Um, Patty Mills is obviously the better shooter. But one thing I will say is the Spurs got a lot of heart. The Spurs are going to come in and try. They're not going to just come out and give up. They're not just going to give the series away. They're going to go out there and compete. They're going to be in position to win games. And it's just going to be, do they have enough? Do they have enough to beat this Warriors team? And KD, his back is a little against the wall. I am a KD fan. And Going into this series, it's kind of funny that a lot of people are starting to see that they got a losing record without Steph Curry. They're losing against bad teams. They, they can't win. They can't score enough. They And we all know it's bull. Um, Steph Curry was told by Steve Curry that he won't be back for the first round. And at the end of the day, all I can say is KD's a monster. Um, in the fourth quarter, i rather have KD than Lamar LaMarcus Aldridge. Obviously, it'd be different if they had Kawhi Leonard. But they don't, so we just got to go based off that. If you have Clay Thompson that can heat up in any minute, make tough shots, create his own shot from time to time, come off some screens and keep the defense moving and reacting, and Draymond Green's ability to lock down the paint or help off the help being a help defender and a rotation defender, and even a good guy that can switch um, and knock down shots from time to time, they're gonna need Draymond Green. To me, will be the X factor. Will he be the 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 facilitator Draymond Green, or will he be more of an aggressive Draymond Green looking to get to the basket, looking to knock down threes, looking to score at opportunities and in transition and still being the facilitator, or will we just get a Draymond Green that's passive? He catch the ball and want to see if somebody else can create a shot or do something. They're going to need performances because this series is not just going to be handed to them. It's not just going to be over right away. The Spurs are going to come out there and compete and, and make the Warriors earn this W. This ain't like, oh, they got the Spurs without Kawhi Leonard, this is going to be an easy series. It's not going to be like that. 
the Spurs don't won over 40 games this year. They won 47 games this year, and they did beat up on a lot of bad teams. But if you go back and watch some footage, they did compete against the good teams, and they have beat teams even like the Thunder and the Rockets. And they can compete with anybody on any given night. And you, you game planning, you're preparing for this team, you're studying this team. And I, I just feel like, if they don't get good performances out of LaMarcus, if they don't get good performance out of Paul Gasol and Rudy Gay and DeJounte consistently, I can see this series, you know, going quickly. And that's just because they just don't have enough. And Danny Green going to have to have some spectacular games where he can get 17 to 20 points and knock down some threes because they're going to need everybody just to be on the same page and just fight. Like, we in the playoffs, we have a chance. And let's just give it our all. Just lay it all out on the court. Because to me, the Spurs in this series have nothing to lose. Some people thought they weren't even going to make the playoffs. Some people thought that they weren't even title contenders. So even if they lost this series, nobody predicted them dead. I mean, nobody predicted they was going to make it. Nobody thought they was going to win. And even I, even as a Spurs guy, and I respect and love Greg Popovich and the team and their organization, I don't even expect them to win a championship this year because they don't have Kawhi Leonard. And with that being said, this is just a write-off. You know, at the end of the day, we don't really know what's going to happen because injuries and stuff can happen. Players can step up, like I said. But nobody is giving the Spurs a chance to even get out of the first round, no matter who they play, even Utah. Some people said they had picked Utah over them. So they're playing with house money. We're coming in here. We're going to play them for real. We're going to play them serious. They don't have Steph. We can key in on Kevin Durant. We can key in on Clay. make it a little bit tougher, give them some tough shots, and make them finish over the top of Paul and Aldridge every once in a while if they go to the paint. And don't foul. Stay disciplined, stay together, and trust the system. And if they do that, this series can go to six because the words are just not as explosive without Steph. And that, that, that ability that if you don't make the right plays or if you don't take advantage of the opportunities, they can just hit a three. And if they hit one three, the crowd going to be behind them. And even if you go on the road, you know, everybody goes to the to the Warriors game because they have that big four. And once one three go in by Clay, he's looking for the next one. KD, once he sees you give him a little space, he's got that killer instinct. He's going to try to post you up. He's going to try to shoot over the top of you. And then when they keep putting you in the pick and roll with Draymond and spread the floor out, it's going to be tough to guard them. Remember, they still do got Livingston. They still do got Iggy, who's a defender off that bench. They still got Nick Young, who can get hot. He can be cold. He's going to be hit or miss. We don't know what he's going to do. JaVale can be an inside presence when it comes to filling up that paint and uh, being a good rotation defender and trying to clog up that paint and get blocks and contestants. Um, as, as a unit, I feel like top to bottom, obviously Golden State is the better team. They're the best team in the NBA, even if healthy, um, because they have that top four over Houston. But other than that, you know, the Spurs are just not going to have enough. And it's going to be tough for Greg Popovich to know that he coached this whole season, made it to the playoffs again, failed to win 50 games, and – to have a matchup where it's actually winnable because they don't have Steph and to see his guys go out there and fight, claw, and battle for this W. And if they come up short, it's going to be heartbreaking for him and this team and the fans because, you know, when I came into this season, I thought the Spurs would be a top four team in the West under the Rockets and the, and the Warriors. And, of course, we didn't really know what we was going to get out of OKC. And for them to go from top three for majority of the season all the way down to now they got to fight the Warriors – in the first round just for, you know, your know, playoff lives is going to be tough for a lot of us to swallow, even if you ain't a Spurs fan, because they basically been the, 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 the what you want is success. They, they are success. And at the end of the day, everything comes to an end. And if they can't get Kawhi Leonard to come back or if he gets traded, you know, it's going to be hard to keep Aldridge there when he can go to a contender. So, this series, to me, can be a bigger picture. Will they start rebuilding? Can they convince Kawhi to come back? Will the markets want to stay? Will the veterans want to keep coming back here knowing that, you know, their title chances can be finally closing after 20 seasons? And they fought, they clawed, they had their chance to win this year. Luck just wasn't on their side as of right now. 
But, you know, we never know. Kawhi Leonard can come back one day and say, hey, I'm ready to play, and that will change this whole series, and we all know that. At the end of the day, I will pick the Warriors in six. I think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be slow. I think it's going to be grindy. But I think KD and Clay just going to be too much for this team. And like I said, they got better contributors. To me, roster-wise, I feel like the Warriors are just better. They have the star power. They have the execution. They have the game plans. They're not scared to take risks. They're not scared to shake things up. They're not scared to try different lineups, and Steve Kirk can coach his ass off too. So I just feel like they just have too much for this beat-up Spurs team, and I just can't see the Spurs winning this series because of that. Let me know what you guys think in the in, in the comment section below, what you guys think. Check out my website, NazisPlayground.com. Link in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, NazisPlayground.com. Link in the description in the comment section below. And let me know who you think going to win. I'm gone, and let me know what you guys think.